I take very special note of the fact that the broad the event brought together women from all over the globe engaged in the blue economy sector whether directly or indirectly according to Tamar Mansi first secretary of development high commission of canada the event was meant to set the stage for women to have conversations around issues impacting them with regards to the blue economy a very exciting opportunity of bringing all countries around the world talking about one common uh, topic, which is a blue economy and how we can all be able to leverage and to use our resources to make sure that we are uh, meeting our sustainable development goals, but also we are meeting the, our goals to the community that we support and we serve. That allow planners. Further to this, Secretary Tama went on to say that the blue economy can play an integral role in economic empowerment of women, not just at community level, but at the global level. I think if we do a quick math and we think that our society, 50% of our society are women and girls, so if we talk about this, it means that we have almost double the potential that already exists. So if we know that now, fishing sector, for instance, if we give an example, is mainly dominated by, by men, even though we know that statistics say that 85% of women are working in industrial fishing, but it's mainly dominated by men. So if we double that by including women and making sure that they have a role to play in that sector, then we're talking about unprecedented growth in terms of economic empowerment. And let's imagine that a young fisherwoman in the Tana River or in Mogadishu or in Kilifi that are able to own their small scale uh, business. They can own their own boat and they can be able to provide to their families and they can work and support other women group and being able to provide uh, more potential, not only for themselves, but for the community that they support. So I think the potentials are there at multiple level. If we look at it at the global level, if we look at it at the community level and we could look at it at the individual level, I think we have a lot to be offered in that sector. Because she went for it. However, even as Blue Economy continues to pose great opportunities for women, Jemai Manjuki, Senior Program Specialist Agriculture and Food Security Program, IDRC, noted that massive marginalization still exists with some subsectors of the Blue Economy having few to no women practicing. We also know that a lot of them are in fish processing. Um, a lot of them are in fish trading and we do not find enough of them on the other parts of the sector. So we do not find enough women in fishing, in, in, uh, in shipping, um, in research. We still, right now, just one out of four researchers in the agriculture sector, and I would assume in the fishery sector as well, is a woman. So although we are saying the place of women is along the whole sector, we also know that there are some parts of the sector that are still marginalizing women as well as those who've graduated. As if marginalization is not enough of a challenge already, Margaret Nakato, Executive Director, World Forum of Fish Harvesters and Fish Workers, went on to point out that women have to deal with other challenges such as poor market prices. Most of the fishing communities have got poor infrastructure development. There's no water, there are no roads, there's no sanitation, there's no health center, no education. So. These are some of the challenges which women face in the blue economy, but that is part why my organization came into force. ...and training that we all need. Further to this, Njuki highlighted that women continue to face barriers in the sector, both visible and invisible. Barriers like access to finance, barriers like, you know, um, low markets for, for fish, opportunities for women to participate in, in those aspects of the blue economy. But we also know there are other invisible barriers around gender norms and social norms where it is not, in some communities, it is not acceptable for women to be in some certain parts of the, of the economy. And those are the ones that we are saying we have to change. Uh, there's too many thank yous. To fix some of these challenges, Njuki says relevant stakeholders must be aware of the numbers and potential that women bear in the sector. Women are already in the sector. They are part of the sector where they are still marginalized, where norms are still stopping them from getting into those sectors, but women are already in the sector. We need to support women. We need to make their contribution visible. Because if that contribution is visible, even the policies and programs that we, we, we formulate are going to support women because they are visible. Present by 
the doc Nakato was emphatic to realize its full potential. There must be interdependence between all sectors and priority given to the blue economy just like it's being given to other sectors. We need to recognize the interdependence of the, of, of the um, resources. Like you need land to be able to go to fish. You need land for women to be able to process fish. So every activity should be able to understand and ensure that such interrelated activities are not, are not look at one activity as the one that needs to be promoted, but we need to look, to look at a comprehensive, integrated manner of uh, approaching the blue economy and not look at it as an isolated case, like only look at mining, or look at fishing, or only look at land. Everything has to be taken into consideration. And because this is not helpful. With the affirmative action debate being rife in the country, it provides an opportune time to extend the debate to other sectors of the economy and the blue economy, which has now global focus, will be a great place to start. Uh, it's my pleasure to present... Uh...